So we're going to talk a little bit today. You know, ITRON is passionate about working with you in the utility industry. And one of the things that we've tackled this last year is how can we contribute in a way uh, to engage that next workforce, to get excited about the work that we do every day, to get involved in the innovations we were talking about yesterday. And so ITRON's worked on a curriculum, uh, partnered um, with the University of Texas, Austin, specifically with Dr. Michael Weber and his team, uh, to build an application, a digital, exciting, interesting curriculum that educates high school students about energy water issues in STEM curriculum that gets them intrigued and excited, as, as excited about what we do uh, to get them intrigued enough to maybe they want to come work in our industry. We envision this as a curriculum that we may be able to use to partner with you as a utility to use in your local communities. It's something that ITRON's employees really cares about. This is a lot of where this started. ITRON employees said, we want to educate kids about this uh, topic of energy and water and getting people involved. So ITRON employees in the local communities where we have presence in U.S. but outside of U.S., it's something we can work in our local communities and help uh, inspire the youth to get involved in energy and water. So we're excited about it. Uh, but to talk a little bit more about it, it's only appropriate if I bring my partner in crime here, Dr. Michael Weber to the stage. Thanks, hey, Cheryl. Thank, Thank you. you. Good, good morning, everyone. We got the 8 a.m. shift, I guess, right? I don't know. <laughs> the good news is it's over early. Yeah, it's over. You'll be done soon. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, you were here a few years ago, so many in the room might remember, but I think it's appropriate if you remind everybody the things that you do or maybe the things you don't do. Sure. Okay. Do we'll talk a little bit about that. So my name is Michael Weber, and it's nice to meet all of you. And I'm, I'm an associate professor of mechanical engineering at the University of Texas at Austin. And I have a chance to work with some of the world's greatest engineering students because UT Austin has a really good engineering program. And it's really an honor to work with those students. And some of the subjects we work on are energy and water and the interconnections of them and what they mean for society and the world. And we have this mission there to train them to be the next generation of energy and water leaders. And so we do that in a multidisciplinary way with uh, policy and markets and economics as well as the engineering. Engineering is not enough, but it's a big part of it. So I work with students and I help run the Energy Institute there and I help run the Clean Energy Incubator. So I do work at the intersection of commercial commercialization, policy, research, and education, all on these topics that we care a lot about. And two years ago, I spoke on the stage on the energy water nexus, which uh, was, a, for some of you, perhaps an introduction to it. You might have heard about it or thought about it, but it was a way to talk about it because it's something ITRON deals with a lot. And a lot of you in the audience will care about these issues from different perspectives. So it's good to be back and be part of this conversation. Well, thanks for being here. Yeah. Why do you feel that energy water, in particular energy water issues, are important? And why do you think our next generation get involved in that? Why is that your cause? That's a good question. So in my view, the Michael Weber view, energy and water are the two most important ingredients for a successful modern civilization. That without energy and water, we don't have the other parts we need. Yeah. Um, and the, the way I think of it is energy is wealth and water is life. Without water, we don't have life. Without energy, we don't have the quality of life we want or the wealth and the affluence. And so they're the important ingredients we need to make everything better. And this is an idea I've had for a while and I thought about it. And I discovered a few years ago that there's this famous Nobel a man named Rick Smalley. Some of you might have heard about him. He won the Nobel Prize almost 20 years ago to the day, right now, in physics for discovering the buckyball, C60, carbon 60, this geodesic dome, Buckminster Fullerene. He discovered that molecule and then was this Nobel laureate, very distinguished gentleman. He spent the last few years of his life, he died a decade ago, unfortunately, the last few years of his life while he was diagnosed with cancer, giving speeches about the most important challenges for humanity, the top 10 challenges. And he listed them in order, starting with what he thought the top challenge was, energy. Number two is water. Number three is food. Then you get to things like the environment and poverty and terrorism and war and, and democracy is actually further down the list. The idea being that energy and water at the top because if you solve the energy problem, then you can solve our water problem. If we have abundant, clean, available, accessible energy, all our water problems are solved because we can desalt the oceans or pump water farther or treat it better or store it. And if we have all that energy and water, then all our food problems are solved because we need energy for the fertilizers and the diesel tractors and for the refrigeration of the food and then the water to irrigate. And then once you solve energy, water, food, you can solve the other problems down the list. So he had a very thoughtful logic for how to tackle society's problems, energy, water at the top. And so that's a way to think about why it's important for us. If we can't figure that out, the stakes are high. There are unfortunately plenty of examples over the last few thousand years where societies collapsed because they had a water constraint. 
We think of the Mayans who collapsed mm -hmm. in uh, South America or the Tang Dynasty in China. There are different places where a really large dynasties collapsed because they didn't have water. So that's something like the stakes are high for society and for civilization. So what you're saying is it's important. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, also, uh, I'm also trying to scare you uh, and uh, you, you, know, you should be doom and gloom. But uh, we're, we're really hopeful and optimistic. I know Itron's optimistic about it. I'm optimistic. The stakes are high, but these are solvable problems. Yes. With, the right, yes, with the right people and the right yeah. talent and the right technologies and the right approaches, solvable problems. That's the way I think about it. Well, you bring up approaches, and I think that was one of the things that I learned the most about is curriculum is changing. Um, the old textbook might be going away, and kids are, don't have the attention span. Wasn't it talked about yesterday? Daniel Burroughs says they're bored. Kids are bored when they go into schools, and they're taught the old way. So I think uh, the curriculum that we put together tries to address that. Do you yeah, want to exciting. tell everybody a little bit yeah. about that? So, so I have the greatest job in the world. I get to work with brilliant yeah. students, and I get yeah. to learn from them. They think yeah. they're learning from me, but actually I'm learning from them. And the way they learn changes with time, and they, they get smarter over time. And I, I have these like funny stories where some people are, are uh, pessimistic about the future education of students, but I'm very optimistic because I see these great students. I think, well, thank goodness they're going to solve our problems because they have what it takes. They think the environment and climate change, energy, water, are, it's their cold war and they're going to solve it. And they're a very values-driven generation. I have students who leave with a bachelor's degree in engineering who are 22. They're offered a, a job for $90,000 a year and they turn it down to work at a company whose values match theirs at half the pay. So they're a values-driven generation. They're thinking a lot about these issues. They learn differently. They're actually better students in many ways. I have students who come into my office sometimes, and uh, energy and water are hot. So I have students come in and say, I want to work on that topic. It's a hot topic. I'll do anything to work with you in your group, Dr. Weber. I'm like, well, OK, well, what kind of grades do you have? And that kind of thing. Like, well, I've got a, a 3.8 GPA or some great GPA. And I, I start like, well, Weber students have better GPA than that. So it's kind of this funny thing. Of course, I laugh because I never would make it into my own group because my grades are nowhere near that good. <laughs> so this is, this is like the funny irony I have. I'm just laughing. Like, the students are better today than when I was a student. And when I came through, we weren't as good. We weren't as dedicated to society. We weren't as values driven. And we learned differently. These students are better. They're more dedicated. They're driven a different way. And they learn in a more interactive way. They're digital natives. And I found that flat textbooks, the traditional in-classroom instruction, doesn't work for them the same way. They're drawn to our more interactivity. And so we had the opportunity a couple years ago to do an online course, a MOOC, a massive open online course, Energy 101, that went across the world. We had 44,000 people from around the world sign up for this course, which is really phenomenal. That is scale that you can get with digital technologies. And it was interactive, and there were media, and there were all these things going on with it. It was great. And during that process of building that course, I had two people on my team who were really brilliant who helped advise me through this. One is a 21-year-old at the time, or 20-year-old student who's brilliant, named Coleman Tharp, who's in here somewhere, actually. I had a chance to work with this genius wonder kid student at where he is who taught me a lot about education. Another guy, Juan Garcia, who's here also, who has 15 years of educational technology and interactive experience around education. And I took what they know about advanced technologies and digital learning and what I knew about the subject on energy. We made this online course. And then in 2014, we made it an app for iPads. We wrote a textbook to go with it with a lot of interactive features, dozens of games and true-false slider games and maps and that kind of thing. And we did it mostly just for fun, to help me teach my class. And then it, it got adopted. People found it, said, that's good. High school started to buy it, and university started to buy it. And then we thought, wait, this is a new way to go about education. The flat textbook is dead. We need Harry Potter textbooks, textbooks that come alive, like the movies and that kind of thing. So we are going to this interactive approach, and we're getting good feedback that it's more natural for the kids. If you've got kids, they're on the iPad already. You know them. They're texting in instead of doing their chores, probably. So they're uh, already naturally engaged this way. And we think this new approach with interactive apps, it gets us to them in the language that they're learning, and they makes it easier to learn, it's more fun to learn, they're learning more, and the feedback's really positive. We're pretty excited about it. So we think it's working, we're getting some traction. It's very cool. Yeah. Go ahead. It's exciting to be part of it. So what do you think we can accomplish with it? So if we, if we do this together and we make it available, what do you think can happen? Yeah, so the idea, you make a good curriculum on energy and water, you make it available for K through 12, there's millions of students in K through 12, boy, that would be a home run. And I think the, the place to start is with uh, the kids in high school who are taking physics or environmental science. You start there, people are already inclined towards some of the technical subjects and get them some new material. And if you do this the right way, you roll it out, you get thousands and thousands of students who get access to information they wouldn't have had before, access to learning. These are your potential hires. 
start, like this is your pipeline of talent you talked about, getting them groomed up to think this is interesting, to think utilities are not dinosaurs, but actually very innovative and forward looking, and that the energy and water distribution systems and all the technology goes into it is a place to be. I think that's where we'll get. And so the home run for us is getting access to a lot of those students who have the interest in those topics, give them better uh, materials, better curriculum that they can learn from, they can take with them for life. And my hope is that we make a measurable effect on STEM education nationally and perhaps internationally. You've got the international platform. Let's go internationally. Let's make people more resource conscious, and that's good for the environment. That's good for our long-term prospects. Let's make them better students. That's better for all of us. We all benefit from students who are better. They're already more naturally talented probably than we are in many ways, so there's a lot of gift to work with. It's just a different tool. So I'm pretty optimistic that we'll have pretty big reach with it. And uh, we'll start in the United States, but there's no reason why this isn't global or we won't go international with it. Taking it all the way. Take it all the way, yeah. I really do see a model where it, there's potential where really good curriculum is in high demand. Uh, school districts need that, and I think the public-private partnership here may be the model of the future, and I think we're getting in early. It might, it might be. I mean, the, the, the textbook model, the industry, um, is a slow-moving industry, and the textbooks that my kids read are the same textbooks I read, although they added more color figures or something. So it's basically the same information. And there are some industries or sectors where that pace of updating the textbooks is too slow. Uh, we were joking the other day, we learned about in petroleum engineering, their drilling engineering class uses the same textbook from the 1980s, which misses all the 30 years innovation like hydraulic fracturing, stuff like that. That happens in a lot of fields. So the, I feel like the materials are behind the times. And getting materials to be more updatable and, and, and relevant is a way to go. And the feedback, from, I, I did tests with my kids, like our own little focus group at home in the Weber household, and uh, even my third grader liked it, so I thought that was a good test. <laughs> so we can, we can keep his attention, because he's all, all YouTube all the time or something like that, or uh, these online games and that kind of thing. So, uh, so I think there's a big opportunity for sure. What do you think if we maybe give everybody a preview? Yeah, let's, uh, we should do that, yeah. Well, you know what? If you're uh, sitting in the audience, this is a little bit, um, if you've seen the Ellen DeGeneres or the Oprah Book Club at a, at a very iTron relative level, <laughs> we're providing a free giveaway today. Pull up at this end of your chair, and there's a card in front of you. We're providing uh, the first chapter that's complete um, on this gift card to all of you. If, if you were a recipient of a very special gold gift card, the golden ticket, raise your hand because that you actually received not only the curriculum but an I, or Kindle Fire. Raise. I think he also gets a tour of the Willy Wonka chocolate factory or something <laughs> like that. I'm not sure. <laughs> Congratulations. All right. We'll give you a Kindle Fire to go along with your new curriculum. Uh, but take that. You don't need to download it right away. I think when everybody jumps online at the exact same time in here, we run into some bandwidth that's used. But via the QR code, uh, you go to the App Store and, and download that first chapter of the curriculum. We're working to complete it together. It should be available, um, what, second quarter? Yeah, we think next it'll year. be done May. In May 2016, we'll have the curriculum done. It'll be available for schools in that fall. Then we're yes. shooting for the next fall. There are already schools we know in the AP Environmental Sciences and other classes where they're really interested in this topic. Yes. So we're starting to prepare for next fall. So it'll be ready in May. And you get this preview. It's available for seven days, so download it, check it out, let, let us know what you think. And then, uh, and then we're going to be building the rest of the curriculum out. And you'll see some preview of what the other chapters will be with the table of contents. And you'll see the first chapter. You'll see some of the interactive features. There's some slider games. There's embedded media. There's different video clips. There's a map, a scroll you can slide through. So it's, it's like a book, but you can really engage with it. And we hope you like it. And this is just a sneak peek of what we th what's coming and, and what we think will be relevant for you or your kids or your community. And I guess that's part of it is a community part, right? So ITRON employees are going to be taking this out to schools where they are volunteers or where their kids are enrolled. And so this would be an opportunity for a lot of your partners as well to yes. roll this out. Absolutely. We, we envision working with our utility clients that if you, as utilities, want to have some access to license of the same curriculum to work in your communities, we'd be happy to work with you on that as well. So more to come, but as Michael said, uh, take a look at it and provide feedback to us. We would love your input, and uh, we'll keep you posted on the progress. That's great. All yeah. right. Thanks, everyone. Well, thank you, Michael. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you.